everyone, Ripley Sellers with Bob's Watches. I'm here in the studio with Justin for another episode of Vintage of the Week, where we pull aside one remarkable timepiece and share with you exactly why we love it. So, Justin, got a cool one here. Very um, nice one today. Yeah, really love this one. Got the memo, so I'm wearing a watch and theme, but what are you wearing today? Oh, today I'm going with the uh, White Dial Rolex Explorer 2. Fantastic. Is that the <clears throat> current gen or the uh, previous one? Uh, this is the previous gen. Um, very similar uh, in appearance, but yeah, this is the previous gen. Uh, great watch. I love it. I got a thing for white dials, the little orange accent. It's a nice watch. I love it as well. I wish my wrists were a little bigger because it's I could, a big guy. Yeah. yeah, it's a big guy. And surprisingly, because it's 42 mil. I'm wearing a Speedmaster, classic moon watch. Uh, also 42 mil, but they wear they, very, very yes, different. Yeah, very the Explorer different. seems so much bigger, even though we're talking 42 mil. It, yeah, exactly, yeah. letting you know numbers aren't always all of it. Yes. Um, well, Good choice, very yeah. appropriate, right? We're talking about a Speedmaster today. Exactly, exactly. So uh, Omega Speedmaster Professional yep. moon watch, pr probably the first to actually be known as the moon watch. Right. Uh, reference 145022, so uh, I guess quick facts on the model itself. Came, it's the first Speedmaster to not have the 321 movement. Um, so it came around right at the end of the 60s. Mm -hmm. um, the first ones came about before they even landed on the moon because that happened in July of 1969. So the very first ones are known as the pre moons that don't have any type of case back inscription about it. Um, and then this example, which is early 70s, 1970, 1971. Um, and then it's what's known as the straight writing because you at this point they've finally recognized that it's on the moon sure. It reached the moon. It's the first watch on the moon and now the case back says it um, But it says it in straight across rather than in a curved manner like you'll see on so you subsequent kind of see on the case back right there. How, yeah, yeah, so it's Written straight across the case back mm -hmm. says the first watch on the moon first watch worn on the moon but Very cool because you know before it actually went to the moon. It's kind of hard to be known as the moon watch, right? <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I mean, so everyone knows the legacy of the Speedmaster was invented in 57 for the world originally of automotive racing, hence the Speedmaster name. Right. Um, obviously, it's, by the early 60s, it starts traveling to space, gets certified by NASA in the mid-60s, but again, it has nothing to do with the moon. Right. It is just the official flight qualified national for all manned space missions. Uh, 69, it is now the moon watch, yes. and at that point, it's the first watch to be worn on the moon, and big deal really significant and yeah, yeah. now it's known formally as yes. the moon watch you go to Omega's website moon watch is the name of a category of speedmasters that namely these ones that right. follow the lineage um, <clears throat> and I, you know I think a lot of times when looking at all the minute details of vintage watches why they're important can kind of sometimes get lost mm -hmm. differences in text and on this one represents pretty strong value c considering it doesn't have the 321 movement it's mm -hmm. significantly more affordable than those that do so if you do want a vintage speedy and don't want to spend you know five figures i always recommend a 145022 mm -hmm. get a lot of the vintage style points but it's um you know quite a bit cheaper and right. it's largely movement based um but it also marks the point where this is the first time it's known as the moon watch this yes. is the first time any reference to the moon is on the watch itself yes and you know it's easy to be like oh straight riding case back whatever that's not fine and good but like it it, it is the yeah, moon watch. it does signify yeah. something really important right um, yeah it's not just a font variation for yes. the sake of it 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 marks that point formally in the speedmaster's history right. where the moon landing became part of its heritage uh not just from a kind of abstract point of view but physically on the watch itself right and i mean like we're talking such a big deal i mean such a big deal with omega such a big deal with just watches in history anyway and this is like this is the first one and that's the straight writing case back signifies that um so i think that it's a great collector piece right i mean if you like the moon watch um you know you love the history there's there's so many watches in that range that are very collectible but this one's kind of special i mean we're talking the first one here like that's it's really a neat piece yeah i mean I, I within the vintage speedmaster because i think it's such an interesting watch to shop for when looking for a vintage model because they've been making it in continuously since 1957 sure. and it's probably evolved less than most other watches mm -hmm. still in existence today obviously things have changed and as they've changed and kind of get more towards kind of the model like i'm wearing here or the new ones <clears throat> um you know these two cases are very similar here you know yeah, uh, obviously one looks a bit older but th the two are 
kind of dead ringers as far as the overall proportions. And as you move further back from the 145022 to the 145012, and you have a different movement, get a massive jump in price. You go back even further where you have the straight lugs and where it doesn't have this kind of twisted structure here. Uh -huh. Massive jump again. You go back to the you know the broad arrow hand and the steel bezels. It keeps getting more expensive. Sure. So if you want a vintage Speedmaster, but are really trying to keep it more towards the affordable side of the spectrum, but still want it to look definitively like a vintage like watch, one four five zero two two is kind of the smart move. Absolutely, it's a good choice. And uh, this one looks old. And this one looks old. And you know. That's talking about the model, but these watches that we bring to the table on Vintage of the Week are always for sale, right? So this watch is kind of special too, um, right? I mean, so we got this from the original owner, which is kind of special. I mean, a watch of this age, you know, um, the guy bought it brand new. He's had it his whole life. He's worn it, obviously. I mean, it's a really, it's a clean watch. It's, uh, you know, like you'd call an honest watch. It's very... Um, well put together, it's not like it's been living in a safe its whole life, you know, it has that age. You can see around the bezel, it's kind of interesting how it's worn. Just around the outer yeah, edge. Yeah, more so on the outside. Yeah, I, I, I really like the way Speedmaster bezels age. Mm -hmm. Some of them get washed out, some of them kind of get this like interesting wear mark. And when you look at sort of the structure of it, it makes sense how the outer part wears more than the inner part. But the overall impact of it is it, it makes it look like a watch that's lived a life. It does. Which, and we always talk like, do you want your vintage watches to look mint? There's always something to be said about mint condition. Right. But, um, you know, if you were wearing this as your daily watch because you like a vintage Speedmaster and you put another nick on the bezel, you're not really going to care that much. Exactly. And I think Speedmaster bracelets, or sorry, Speedmaster bezels uh, can age nice and not nice. There's some of them that I actually don't like so much. I mean, they're, I think with the really fine print, they can start getting lost pretty quickly with some with some wear and some age. Um, and this one's really nice. I, I'm in the boat with you where I like my vintage watch to uh, have some character to it and have lived a life and that be apparent when you see the watch. And this uh, this one kind of falls right in that category for me. And then the, the uh, you know, the patina on the loom is beautiful. It's got a nice color on it. It's even. And uh, like you said, it's really, uh, you know, it has that old look. It contrasts with the white hands really nicely. You can tell it's not brand new. It's been around the block. Um, just a beautiful watch. Exactly. It's obviously been, been polished before. It has its, you know, marks and scuffs as well. It's got its original bracelet. Um, you know, I think when you're buying a Speedmaster, you kind of have those two, and you're choosing a classic moon watch, that is. You kind of have those two schools of you can either go modern, new, make it look kind of fresh, get mm -hmm. the 3861, go coaxial. Sure. Or you go vintage because you can still get a new watch with a acrylic crystal. You yeah. can still get a Hess Light Crystal on the new model. So, you know, that's kind of a wash. You really, where, do you want a new watch that it carries on the spirit of a vintage one or do you just want to go for the vintage one right. itself? And those are two completely different purchases. Yeah. But if you want the vintage, <clears throat> I, I mean, it's kind of the smart move if you for your everyday. So it's a great choice. Yeah. yeah. Well, gorgeous piece, and it is available, correct? Like this exact example. This watch is available on our site. So if you're looking for a great vintage watch, looking for another vintage Speedmaster to add to the collection, definitely go to the website and take a look. Yeah, absolutely. We always say uh, you can have a lot of different Speedmasters, and they're all kind of different. So you can have a whole collection of Speedmasters, and there's still room in that collection. Yeah, I'd as well. say you can never have too many if you want to just get but right out there and say That statement applies it. to watches. That applies to watches in general. <laughs> Well, thanks for not watching this episode of Vintage of the Week. Don't forget to tune in next time to see what watch we'll have for you then.